Um, it's my pleasure to, to introduce uh, Janine Delaney, who's going to speak to us um, about the evolution of a Facebook page. Uh, so Janine is the manager of Recollect, um, a software designed and managed by uh, New Zealand Micrographic Systems. And as such, Janine really works across lots of different communities up and down New Zealand. Um, she's also a professional archivist and has worked on major system projects for the Hocken Library and Archive New Zealand. And um, according to New Zealand Micrographic Systems websites, Janine loves metadata, the Muppets, which is a good alliterative combination, and her um, favorite doctor is the tenth. So please join me in welcoming Janine to present. Thanks, thanks very much. I'm, I'm gonna cough and I apologize for that because I'm just getting over what everybody else has had for this entire winter. Um, Despite the title, um, this is not actually a case study of Facebook, um, but it's more about a digital initiative that is purely community and collaboratively driven. It started out in Facebook, but that's really just the beginning of this tale. Uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge Heather Newby, who's been the drive and heart behind this project. Heather is in the audience. I wish she was here standing giving this presentation, but I'm really doing it on her behalf, um, and it's really quite an inspirational tale. Um, so Heather prefers to stay out of the limelight, but she has helped me with the content on this. Um, I appreciate that. Heather was born on the West Coast and brought up in Greymouth. Uh, she's always been interested in the West Coast and its history, and she started a personal Facebook page in May 2014, uh, posting her own photos to it. So that's Heather. It's, um, I think it's the only photo I managed to find of you on, that, that, on your page. Um, and this is some of the content from her personal collection. So the, um, the Facebook page got a following, people started commenting and sharing, uh, so it became a Facebook group. It was open, it became very popular very fast. The group had 1,200 members within a month. People were posting photos, they were sharing stuff from their own pages, as you do, and the comments were starting to build around it in a big way. Um, but it actually got so big that it became a problem, it started to clog up people's news feeds. Uh, the decision was made to make the group private, which meant you had to um, join in, you had to ask to join. Um, but that didn't stop the numbers growing. It got up to 7,000 members at the beginning of this year. Um, but other problems were emerging. Um, with so much activity on this site, people weren't seeing stuff or they were f or finding things that they'd seen before. As you'll know, Facebook works on an infinite scroll, so there was no way to sort of track or catalogue or organise this stuff. And there's been some amazing content through here. Um, so there were thousands of entries to sift through. Um, and that's sort of the task at hand. Um, so the group had built a considerable digital archive and a strong community in less than a year. Um, but Facebook isn't an archival platform in, in any sense. I don't know why I've got that photo there. I let um, Cameron help me with this, so I think he's just picked random photos, but that was kind of a cool one. So where do you go after Facebook? Um, the group considered sites like Kete and Flickr, but what Heather Soren wanted was Recollect as a platform which would retain the collaborative approach of Facebook, but ensure that the content and the contextual metadata was managed and accessible. So there, there's a long-term preservation aspect to this. This is, this is the ambition. Um, whereas Facebook tends to be a very ephemeral medium. Even if it's stored behind there, you've effectively lost that access to it. Um, so this is where my team came in at NZMS. Um, but it is, I don't want to make a story about Recollect. This is really a story about the West Coast. Uh, just a point, there is no West Coast group. Um, in the formal sense, they're, they're a bunch of inter interested individuals. They're not a society, they're not formally constituted, they have no legal standing. Um, so they don't have any affiliation with another heritage organisation. No elected officers, no money, no assets. So how do you get things going? Um, crowdfunding seemed a re really um, real prospect, so this is timely, thank you Jackson. Um, after all, with 7,000 Facebook members, could they each come up with about a dollar per annum just to support the site? Heather floated the idea on the Facebook group of shifting the heritage content to a permanent managed site. Uh, she had immediate success with a private donation of $3,000, just, just one in, in, interested individual. Um, so we set up a site for her because it's much easier um, to actually get funding if you've got something that you can see. And it looks a little bit like that. Um, um, and we also helped out with investigating um, the funding sites available. Um, we came back with the recommendation of Give a Little, sorry Jackson, um, simply because they didn't charge any fees and this, this group doesn't actually have any money. Uh, 
I also have to say we did quite a bit of pro bono work on this one, but, but Heather is, is like family, so um, that's what you do for family. So setting up was actually a bit of a challenge. Give a little were really helpful, but they hadn't encountered anything like this before. West Coast was not a legal entity, so it didn't have a bank account, and Heather didn't want to have to handle the money, so she wanted the money paid directly to NZMS as the service provider. Um, that took a bit of shoehorning to register both West Coast and NZMS and sort of merge them together in a, in a transparent sort of way. Um, give a little have nice little widgets so you can drop in there, so we did that. And Heather set the target of 25,000. Um, that's, quite, that's quite a lot of money, but it was to provide a buffer of at least three years um, before they had to go looking for more funding. So we got the tool set up and the group set around fundraising. Um, and again, the Facebook site has been a big part of this, so the two are really running in conjunction. So I'm finally behind with myself. So that's the Give a Little site there. Um, so yeah, on Facebook they started to um, yeah, start putting out the pleas for money. Um, as you can see from this screen here, um, the um, campaign is chugging along. It's actually up to about 5,500 now, but that doesn't include the original donation um, nor a successful grant application that Heather got of 2,000 from uh, Blackadder Trust in the West Coast. Um, but it wasn't all set plain sailing. Um, about the time West Coast launched its appeal, um, former all back Jerry Collins died in a car crash, if you remember. There was a huge outpouring of financial support through Give a Little for his baby daughter. The consequence for us was that the Give a Little site kept crashing regularly, just as our campaign was getting going. So people were trying to donate to the West Coast site, but couldn't, so they were getting a bit frustrated. So we had to build alternative links and, and, and a way to, to give um, donations. Um, most tragic for Heather's um, group of volunteers um, who were working hard on the publicity was that crashed the day that they got this feature published in the Greymouth Star. Um, but to be fair, you get what you pay for, and we weren't actually paying give a little anything. Um, migrating the content um, from a technical point of view also had its frustrations. Uh, anyone who has a personal um, Facebook page will know that you can archive it. It turns out with a Facebook group you can't. The logic is, I understand that the group isn't owned by one person, so there's no facility to export your data out. And I'd just like to underline that, there is no facility for you to export your data out. Uh, one of our developers eventually built a script um, and managed to harvest the bulk of the content. That was about 10,000 um, items, plus all the associated comments and metadata. It took them about a week to sort of basically um, nail down the, um, the API on that one. Um, we probably also broke um, section 2.C of Facebook's pages terms of conditions in the process. And I think that just underlies the troubling part of your relationship with Facebook is that you don't have clear um, ownership of your content or full rights over your disposition. So that's my favourite one there. You have just granted them non-exclusive, transferable, sub-licensable, royalty-free, worldwide licence to use any IP content that you post. And of course you all read the, sh the, the fine print on these things. Um, interestingly, um, just as a side issue, one of those happy moments where something pops up into your email at, at a timely case. Uh, this is also a concern for the Society of American Archivists, who wrote to Mark Zuckerberg Berg, and Facebook in August this year, concerning the ability to download archives for pages created on Facebook. <coughs> so, not just a problem for us, um, recognised as a problem by the Society of Archivists in America, and obviously trying to do something about that. So they can see a lot of a lot of history and heritage disappearing. But back to the West Coast, um, we managed to salvage what in the end turned out to be 8,000 unique items once we'd removed the duplicates, um, and the related discussion threads, which was a critical part of it. Uh, a group of volunteers set up by Heather um, commenced work on actually starting to put some metadata against them. So actually putting some titles and some description um, and and some keyword search terms against it, plus a whole bunch of geotags, as you'll find out. They completed 80% of this in an amazing two and a half weeks. Um, and I think this one's a really inspiring story about what a passionate bunch of people can do with really no budget, no money, but just, just the desire to do something. Um, the description is not shabby. I'm, I'm an A&D archivist, so um, uh, I have an opinion on the matter. Um, the description is controlled by a template that my set team set up for them. It's not that different from templates some we've set up for other sites or have worked with on other libraries uh, for their sites. 
Uh, the fields include the core information such as your title, a broader description, who the contributor of the, uh, the image was, and it is mostly photos. The provenance if this is known, and there's the ability to put in a attribution link if the image was sourced from another online collection. And so uh, big thanks there and hello to um, National Library and to Papa for, for really making this content available because groups like this one thoroughly appreciate it and they are making use of it um, and they love sort of being able to gather that legally and, and they're returning the compliment to you by actually putting the links back to your site. Um, and a lot of geolocation, so um, linking up to Google Maps and Street View. So I just thought I'd chuck in a few examples of, of what some of these um, records are looking like and showing off some cool photos in this, at the same time. So this one's got the contributor for the Murchison Museum. And this is all volunteer work. This one photographer is um, known, and there's actually a page about who James Ring was, because they've actually got quite a lot of his content. Who the contributor was, um, they've actually pinned it to Google Maps where that um, uh, shipwreck occurred. And they put on a copyright statement uh, using Creative Commons license. <coughs> this is really just a chance to show off some cool images, and I think you've probably worked that one out by now. Um, they actually put the street view in on that one. <coughs> Sometimes the buildings don't look any different um, from, one, um, from the old version to the new version. And this one's my personal favourite. I think this is just awesome. Heather has actually put a YouTube video in as the context on what this pixie town Greymouth Industries Fair was. Um, and if you watch that YouTube video, you will totally understand what the whole thing's about. <coughs> They're also using linked data. Um, through controlled terms and um, other connections, they can um, make connections between images and a broader context um, of them. So this one, Biddy of the Buller, um, is uh, an early gold prospector. Um, but you can see there's a link to a story about Biddy there. Um, and again, the story links back to the photograph. But there's also a link to um, a place, and there's the information about Westport. Um, so the system's set up to make these connections between things where, where, where connections can be made, and, and they're making use of it. So I mentioned the copyright statements are also being added. Um, this is the contribution page for um, the community to offer up photographs. Uh, and what we did was we put down some, some quite sort of simple statements. We've, uh, Creative Commons is not a difficult concept to get your head around, but we just wanted to sort of drop the options down to something really simple um, that people could select from. And um, the important thing was the Facebook um, comments were all harvested as well and, and clearly attributed as, as such. And I think these sort of comments show what a wonderful thing what Facebook is. It's the spontaneity of people just having a conversation about something and the, and the detail that comes up. This about um, uh, two actors, Ian Watkin and Bruno Lawrence and Blurter, which some of you may remember. <clears throat> and this one, um, a personal favourite. I just love the photo of this abandoned tractor, and it's got quite a good description about it. It's, um, it's Stafford Bay in South Westland. Um, but the real detail is in um, the posting, and this one's from Heather again. Um, quite a poignant story, because the tractor it really tells the story of, of um, an attempt by Polish families to settle in smooth water. And it failed due to a whole range of things. Um, but you know, the, the worst event was basically um, one of the men was chopping down a tree and it fell on the house, killed his wife. The, and the settlement was eventually abandoned. So um, that tells you a lot more than just uh, it's an old rusting tractor. Um, I, this is my favourite, so I've just thrown that in for, for gratuitous use. So I mentioned a team of volunteers, and this has actually settled down to a core of seven um, who are administering the site. Uh, May, Claire, Brian, Christine, Rowena, Laura and Heather are, are the site administrators. Um, it's a collaborative effort, none of them are paid, and they're putting in up to as much as four hours a day each. So it's, it's a really big effort. Um, they're scanning um, and uploading new content directly. They're responding to email postings, and I just took a few um, snippets out of that one. So there's quite a lot of activity about, there's a lot of activity about this site, and there's com comments coming back from people and, and questions. And um, that ability for the community to actually off offer content as well, they're reviewing that and, and improving the description of that. 
So here the envisaged site is the West Coast wide resource um, for schools and that libraries could use, a two ring or YY for West Coasters. Um, the team stressed they're not in it for the money or the glory. They didn't set out to compete with anybody or prove anything. Um, but the change of platform from Facebook and the overall popularity of the site um, has brought about some tension um, with the local um, cultural institutions, which is an unfortunate thing. Uh, there seems to be three themes about this. The first is a perceived threat to, um, to revenue. Uh, many of the museums on the coast have photographic collections, um, but you have to turn up to look at them. So there's often a admittance charge to access them. That can be as high as $26. Um, so it's a revenue maker for, for the museums. Um, they may also work on reduced hours and they may get a little bit of income from selling um, low resolution copies um, of, of the photographs. Uh, on the West Coast site, by, uh, by contrast, they're not selling anything, I stress that. They're not making money in any way. Um, but the content can be freely downloaded. Um, and as a web service, they're effectively open 24-7. So instead of the collaboration and mutual benefit you'd like to see, the, you know, the site driving traffic to the museums and the museums getting their material publicised and identified, there is, is sort of more of an uneasy standoff at the, at the moment. Um, other element to this one is I think a perceived challenge to professional standing. Um, the group has come in for criticism by some museum staff for their lack of professional training or understanding of museum ethics. Um, yes, they're all volunteers. Um, the irony is that some of them are also volunteers at the museums. Uh, and I have to say, I don't think lack of professional training doesn't mean, does mean uh, irresponsible. Um, Heather and the, uh, and the team have mechanisms in place for dealing with issues and complaints. Um, there are procedures to redact or remove material if required. And they're actually having to deal with quite a lot of this because the legacy of moving stuff from Facebook is is actually having to deal with that on a more you know, permanent basis with people saying, why is that up there? I want that taken down. So there's actually quite a lot of maintenance and management around having pulled that data through. And the last point I think is just a, just a personalities thing by the sounds of it. Um, what Heather calls Planet Greymouth. Um, and it's just perhaps a character of, of, of places where everyone knows everyone and everybody knows everyone's business. Uh, but it sounds like it's led to an unfortunate element of, of suspicion and mudslinging from some individuals. So, um, Unfortunately, this characteristic is also played out in the Facebook group with a, a backlash from some of the Facebook members who were not enamoured with the idea of paying for anything when Facebook was free. I don't actually realise Facebook is getting your money somewhere else. Um, Heather has had to handle some fairly wild accusations. Um, the example of recollectors ripping off vulnerable West Coasters. Um, and the odd act of petty rebellion by some of her Facebook administrators. So if anything, this is a case study of, of group dynamics and people being people, I think. But on to happier things, how is the site doing? Well, they've got um, over 9,000 images now uploaded and a whopping 8,442 have been geotagged. So these people really know their subject matter. Uh, for September alone, there were 9,882 visitors and quite a lot of page views. And just as a point of concept comparison, I went back and, and looked at some of the other sites that we host, and these are public library ones. Some of them are actually got very active um, campaigns around um, you know, driving traffic to their sites. Um, this West Coast one is, is three times as busy as, as the nearest one that I could find. Um, and that's, yeah. Um, There's 365 registered members, not so good as 7,000 for Facebook, but if you remember that most of the visitors are going to be anonymous people just coming in, browsing, looking at the content, these 365 have registered for a purpose, which is to contribute something, to tag something, um, or to upload something. And they've had 197 photos that haven't come from the team, they've actually come from the community itself. And a proof of the pudding, um, I just picked this one because I thought it's, it's a nice, Nice to end with a bouquet rather than a few brickbats. Um, people are really appreciative of it. And if you read down to the bottom, that really sense of that socialness of the site and its, it's informality. So that's it. Um, do go and have a look. There, there's some um, fantastic content on there. Um, HTTP westcoast.recollect.co.nz. And if you'd like to join that Facebook group, there's the URL for that one too. Thank you.
much, um, Janine. We've got we've got about five minutes, so we can take uh, some questions. If anybody has anything to ask Janine about the process or the the project. So I'm just going to repeat the questions just for the um, sake of the video that's going to go online after. So the question was, is, that, is the API available? Hi, Sarah. Yes, there is an API. Um, what do you mean? I suppose it's a question of what you mean by availability. The downloadable one. The yes, yes, it can be downloaded. Yeah. Um, it's also, um, it's not quite there yet, but this is going to connect up to Digital New Zealand, so um, the West Coast content will be available through Digital New Zealand as well. Anybody else? I had a quick question actually, Janine, about the user contributed content. So how mm. does that how does that process work? Do people um, does it still go th flow through Facebook and then onto the Recollect? Or? Ah, there's, yeah, I, I missed that, but there's actually quite a bit. It's still a bit of interchange there, but both sites are, are working in in, in, in parallel. Um, so here, there's trying to you know push the more sort of permanent content down to Recollect and get people mm. to add it there, preferably with a, a, a better quality image. Mm. But um, there's quite a bit of cross, cross pollination as, as stuff is tweeted up from from Recollect to Facebook, and um, some content is copied back down from Facebook to Recollect to be right. Right. So it's captured. kind of a two-way street. Yeah, now, definitely. In a way, they're both yeah. speaking to yeah. each other. And and Facebook still has its own distinct audience and its own distinct purpose and it, it is it is different it is mm. a different um, like medium. you say that almost real-time conversation is something that yeah, yeah. Facebook facilitates really well yeah I think yeah. The, I think the, the the gold standard is to be able to emulate that sort of spontaneity mm. and, and uh, on chat on a, on a sort of heritage site like this one yeah yeah cool well, unless if we don't have anything else any other questions we can wrap up a bit early and you can make your way to the next session but let's thank Janine again Thank you.